You're watching the number one program on cable news. Enter the no-spin zone on the O'Reilly Factor, the most powerful name in news, Fox News Channel. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Bill O'Reilly in the Unresolved Problem segment tonight. Take a look at this clip from the smash hit American Idol. I made it through the wilderness. Somehow I made it through it. Didn't know how lost I was until I found you. I was beat and complete. I've been had. I was sad and blue. All right, why don't they just call the show Let's Mock the Helpless? The question, are these reality programs harming the people who watch them and the people who participate in them? With us now in the studio is Dr. Lisa Newton, who teaches ethics at Fairfield University, and Dr. Bruce Weinstein, the author of the book, What Should I Do? Four Simple Steps to Making Better Decisions in Everyday Life. Obviously, that man did not make a good decision going on a program, but maybe he wanted the attention. Now, um, I have always said from day one, and I know American mm -hmm. Idols on Fox makes them a ton of dough, that... Uh, it's cruel. They look for people like that guy because mm -hmm. they know he's horrible and then they get to mock him. And I'm uneasy with that. Am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. The, it's a question of human dignity. Some people are better at protecting their dignity, their native, God-given, protected dignity, than other people are. And to find the vulnerable ones, to find the ones that can be lured into making fools of themselves, into sacrificing their dignity, preferably for money so everybody feels good about it, um, is it a terrible enterprise. All right, well, let me play devil's advocate here. I'm on your side, and Dr. Weinstein has got the other side. We'll get to him in a minute. <laughs> but there's nobody forced this guy to go on a program, okay? So he sure. knew what he was getting into, all right? Mm -hmm. Nobody pulled a gun to his head. He was compensated. We don't think much, but he was compensated. And maybe this guy uh, was willing to take the public humiliation for mm -hmm. the attention. Mm -hmm. See, he's probably never had any attention in his life. And this is, you know, he's traded it off. That's the kind of trade we don't want people to make. Yeah, but is that our right to say? Doesn't this guy as an American have the right to make it for himself? Two questions. Question number one, is it right for us to ask him to make that sacrifice in order to amuse us? Second question, should we pass a law forbidding it? Answer to the first one is we have no such right. And he should not, he should not do it. We should not watch him. And the various commercial interests that are involved in this enterprise should not do what they're doing. Okay. All right. Dr. Weinstein, you see it differently. One of the rights that we have in this country, in fact, one of the rights that we'll be defending in a few weeks, is the right to make foolish choices. Now, it'd be very difficult to defend this kind of conduct, but the question is, do we have a right to do it? And as long as we're not hurting other people, the main but moral But you are question, hurting that guy in a sense. But he gave his informed consent. Now, the main moral well, question Well, you say is, informed consent. Yes. He, didn't, he looked like a sad sack to me. Well, you know? come on. People who go on these shows know what they're getting in for, and if they don't, ahead of time, the producers will apprise them that. They'll explain the risks, the consequences of engaging in this behavior, and then it's up to the person to accept or reject the opportunity to be All on. Right, but let's assume for for uh, the sake of argument, and I believe this to be true, that the producers of American Idol, and we're going to get to the other programs as well, we're not ganging up on this one, they look for people who are horrendous. So it, it's come out like the audience, they want the cringe factor, you know, doctor? They want that. I know that, but nevertheless, the people who are contestants have decision-making capacity, and they have the ability to decide to accept or reject the opportunity. In fact, as you know, but we live in... It, all right. We, hey, just one moment. We live ahead. in an exhibitionist culture, and so the networks are simply giving people what they wanted. The real more right. question is, should we be amusing ourselves in this way? Well, so that's the next question. question. question it, it, should people who enjoy this kind of embarrassment mm -hmm. for the person on the air, are they bad people? They're not bad people, but they're not making themselves any better people. Look, there's a, an instinct in us that l looks for vulnerability. Uh, how much do you know about teenage girls? I was a teenage girl. We picked the most vulnerable kid in the class and we savaged her for about a year. I don't know how much damage it did to her. I wake up in the middle of the night screaming about it sometimes. But that is normal behavior for human beings. It's just that we've spent 10,000 years of civilization trying to make ourselves better than but that. But we haven't, because this is the lowest point in, um, in TV history in America. No, we, we would we argue that, but did you enjoy the show Candid Camera 50 years not ago? Not really. Well, a lot uh, of I'm different. Did. I'm different. I'm not the mainstream <laughs> Man, viewer, I right? I mean, I, I, mean I, I didn't really enjoy Alan Funt sitting there and setting up uh, contrived stunts, mm -hmm. but I understood the appeal of the show. These shows, I don't really understand the appeal, but we are at the lowest point ever. These are cheap shows. They don't cost money. They're exploitative. And nobody can argue with that. I mean, they are exploitative. They're exploiting people who are allowing themselves to be exploited. Yes, I know.
But then you're getting to the sexual area, okay? And let's go with the uh, bachelorette. All right, here you have a nice looking woman, all right? who is basically uh, given her choice of uh, guys to, I don't know what the ultimate goal is, I guess marriage, but I don't believe that for a second. And, you know, the rejection is what people are, are locked into. Who's going to be rejected? Well, wait, wait, hang on just a second. What happened on Sunday in the Super Bowl? People are watching one team versus another, and yeah. we revel in supporting our team, and, and we revel in the fact that other teams lose. When we go, when you send your child but to the that's a fair beat. fight, see? That, I mean, if well, you've got a sporting fair. event, that's a competition. This is an emotional... Um, an emotional draining of a person. I'm not good enough to be with Trisha. I, I mean, I watch this and, and Joe Millionaire, and I cringe because these people are giving uh, their most intimate thoughts to an audience that wants to see them thrown off the island. But they're asking for this. Again. They are asking for it, but we're lapping it up. Well, that's the real question. Why, at this point in our culture, do we find this kind of show amazing? Why? why? Well, I, I mean, why? What, uh, here's what happened. Tell me why. We, we, because we raise the bar every generation for what's considered titillating. Fifty years ago, this would have been of hurt, unheard of. Even 20 years ago, you wouldn't have seen this on cable television. No, of so course not. We keep raising of the bar. But and that does it look no, that, I'm not justifying I'm just trying to explain but that isn't why this that isn't the thing. answer to the question do you know the answer to the question well we're raising the bar of what counts that's not the that. answer to the question though that's the television yeah, yeah, industry yeah. figuring out a way to make money yeah. do you know why that that here in America now we uh, have embraced this kind of stuff with a vengeance there must be a reason is it we're insecure in our own lives is there uncertainty here what is it oh good lord ask the sociologists uh, all I know the, the um tendency is natural. The tendency to seek out vulnerability and to enjoy watching sadism people. Sadism is natural? Well, it's not exactly sadism. Sure it is. It's, it's enjoying other people's failure. Exactly. But you'll notice, you mentioned That's the sadism. Football. Wait, wait, Super Bowl. You mentioned the Super Bowl. Um, sportsmanship says you hit that guy as hard as you can and you, you bring Different. him down, you get the football. Absolutely. But then, if you jump up and down afterwards and play to the crowd, you're going to get a penalty, and you should. Well, that's unsporting, but you guys yes. still haven't nailed it down for me because I don't understand why America is not the whole country, but mm. there's a sadistic streak in our society that I don't get. I'll give, we'll give you 20 seconds. I'll give you 20 seconds. Go we okay. have a right to make foolish and even stupid choices, and sadly, as long as we're not hurting anyone else, no one can interfere with that. Now, the, no, aren't the, we hurting that poor guy by watching that show? Uh, well, he's hurting himself, yeah. and he, he we're and, helping. We're his, piling on. Well, that's true, and obviously, there are better shows to watch. But the question is, is it immoral to view these shows? Absolutely not. All right. The only way we can say that human dignity is valuable is to say that it cannot be sold. What we have said in these shows is that human dignity is for sale, and sell your own. All right. Go watch. It disturbs me. Thank you very much, doctors. We appreciate it.